What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video of Cup of Code 01. Um, this is part of the 100 Days uh, to Python Mastery series. Um, I had a, a good friend of mine who I'm teaching Python to. Uh, he's, in the, he's in the middle of going through a complete and utter career change. Um, no computer experience other than the regular stuff that most people have, which, you know, internet searching and so forth. And he really wants to learn to be a coder, so he's starting with Python just to learn how to read and write code. Um, and the last video that I had done with the letter um, A, he was having a contextual understanding of a difficulty getting around this whole graphing idea, and, and it didn't make too much sense to him. So I was able to draw it out. Still haven't done it for the video portion yet. But I did do it for this next video. We're going to do um, two more letters as, as part of the, part of the uh, exercises. So first, we're going to be doing the letter S. Um, if someone says it's a number five, I mean, whatever. It's like freaking, you know, pixelated crap like Minecraft. Oh, we're speaking of uh, Minecraft series is coming out soon. Using Python to create whatever we want in Minecraft and importing it in so it can be used on any server. It's, it's pretty cool. It's definitely getting my son interested in coding. So let's jump right into it. So in this code, let's go to the top up here. What I have is I make a grid and find out how to move the dots to the right to make it an S. Let's do the same for S. That's good practice. All right. Um, this one I broke. Some people were having a hard time with that one if statement. And nobody's going to sit there and do that from their head. I mean, I had to draw this out on graph paper and then go. And then on the right-hand side, I was writing down for each individual row. And then I was looking at how to make that more and more refined. Um, so pretty much saying, okay, this this dot only shows up if it's if row equals this and row equals row equals this or row equals this and column equals this that kind of a thing. Uh, so, but for the letter S, I broke the code up a little bit so it's a little bit cleaner to to read. So, letter S equals an empty an empty string uh, for row in range seven for column in range seven. So again, we're a forty nine pixelated image essentially. If row equals zero or row equals three or row equals six and column is greater than zero, columns less than seven, letter S, we want to print the star. So let's just, I'm not going to go through it like iterate before like we did with the debugger. I just want to look at this first line of code and actually look at our output. So what this is saying is that if row equals zero, well, it does. We can say that this is row zero. Fair enough. Or row equals three, zero, one, two, three three or row equals six four five six and column is greater than zero and column is less than seven so what you don't see is that there is zero one two three four five six seven print the star so column greater than zero which is going to be one through six because less than seven for rows zero, row three, and row six, print the stars. And then else if, so if it's not any of that row or column combination, then do this to print the star. So you can imagine I still have to print this, 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 and this. That's it. And that's what these next two else if statements are doing. They're printing out this portion and this portion. And you can see the, the row and column is going to be the only differentiation. Uh, this one is going to be column one. Is that what I have? Yep. Equals column one for these two stars. Row zero, one, two. So row one and two makes sense. And then we have column six for row, was it six and five? Four and five for column six. Print the stars. Else, we're going to print the space. Remember, not an empty string, but a string that actually has a space in it. Um, letter S, and then we have a new line, and then we print the letter S. Now, just for uh, explanation's sake, I'm going to put like the letter R there. Actually, no, I'm going to put the letter S. <laughs> uh, just so you can see that instead of the spaces, then it would print the S. So you can still see we have our, our S if you follow the green stars here, 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 and here, and here. The white spaces now are taken up with the letter S because that's what I put in. Um, it it, it could have been anything. If I put a star, oops, a daisy. If I put a star there, then it just would have printed a big block of stars. But we don't want that. And if I put an, if I put nothing there, not even a space, I'd get the letter E, which makes sense, right? Because we weren't doing any spaces here. We weren't doing any spaces here, none here. But I did need spaces here. I needed these all pushed to the side. So I could have done. 
Uh, do, 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 do. This, and that would have gotten me there. All I did was I add spaces to the string of the star here, but that's not really clean code. Uh, more importantly, I should have had this. So dupe the space to make it a space in the string, not just an empty string. All right, so that's the letter S. Now for the, the letter X, same thing. X equals an empty string, just like up here, just like all of them before. Uh, why did you do double quotes so single? It does not make a difference. It does. I'm also doing a new keyboard. I'm experimenting with the. Um, I'm experimenting with a new keyboard for uh, ergonomic sake. Er ergonomic sake. For row zero to seven, for column zero to seven, and you can see that I did up here. I didn't do zero to seven. I just did seven. That includes zero to six because we don't include seven. So it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, which is actually seven elements, but index of zero. I'm getting tired of saying that. Um, column equals one or column equals five. So here we are. And row is greater than four. Row is greater than two. Or and just you can go through this. Whoops, a daisy. Let me get. So you can see it at least once and pause the video if you need to write this. So if, actually, you know what? Let me do this. Uh, I think it's on view, active editor, soft wraps. Perfect. So, and I'll close this up a little bit and it should be at good. So if column equals one or column equals five and row is greater than four or row is less than two or row equals column and columns greater than zero, column six. Again, all of this crap, print a star was done with me creating a grid, a seven by seven, 49 pixel grid, drawing the stars, seeing where I wanted them, and then on the right, writing down what that row column sequence was, and then just creating the code for it. That's nothing nothing fancy there. And if you guys really need to see that, that graphing piece I'm talking about, let me know. And we'll create a video showing that that, that graphing piece. Next, next uh, little software we're going to write, Python program, which calculates the age in dog years. So for dogs, their year 0 to 2 is equal to 10 and a half human years each year. So if a 2-year-old dog would actually be 21 years old. After that, each year, each dog year is 4 human years. So it's not, it's not a standard scale. So we have human equals integer of the input. How many human years has the dog been alive? So let's say I put 6 or 8. It's going to take that input. It's going to make it an integer. Because when I type it in, it's technically a string. So I have here how many human years has the dog been alive? So I'll say eight, and I'll hit enter. And then it tells me that the dog in dog and dog's years is 45. Uh, choose any letter from the alphabet. Um, and some of you may notice these double quotes here, and I'll, I'll comment on that in a second. So I have if human is less than zero. And by human, what do I mean? Human's the input I just put in. That's just the variable I named it. So if eight is less than zero, false, but print age must be a positive number because somebody might put in negative four or zero um, and then exit the program altogether so it's not staying there hung, waiting to be executed. Else if human is less than or equal to two, then the dog age equals human times 10.5. Because remember, for year one and year two, if it was if they put zero, it get must be a positive number. If they put one or two, it's going to be one times ten and a half or two times ten and a half to get dog years. So that's it right there. Or else dog age equals twenty-one plus human minus two times four. So why did we do that? Well, the twenty-one is coming from if this is if the human if the input is less than or equal to two but greater than zero it'll do this run if we're putting in three we don't have to go through this again we already know we have a base of 21 years because that's the first two years is 10 and a half so now we just have to account for that additional year which would be times four for each of those years so this human minus two is taking into account what did you put for your input i put in sit well i put in eight yeah eight so 8 minus 2, why am I taking off two years? Because those first two years, 10.5, each year is represented right here by 21. That's why. So 8 minus 2 is 6. So it's 21 plus 6 times 4. And we yes, we do do PEMDAS. So we have 6 times 4 plus 21, and we're getting 45 as a resultant. Print the dog's age and dog years is, and then comma, dog age. And it's just going to plop in that variable right there, which is 45. Next piece, uh, Python program to check if the letter is a vowel or a consonant. So x equals input, so the user is going to put something in. Choose any letter from the alphabet. So I'm going to say uh, b, you know, and I'll hit enter. It tells me b is a consonant. 
Um, how did I do this? If x in, and I'm just creating, uh, this is essentially, this is a tuple because we have the quote, uh, the parentheses. Oh, I said, I almost said quotations. Look up here real quick. Uh, for print, I had the dog's age and dog's years is. You see how I started and closed the string with single quotes, but I wanted to have dog comma s. I can't use single quotes because then it's like closing off a string. So they have to be different. So if I really wanted to make these guys singles, then I'd have to make the opening and beginning of the string singles. Oops, a doozy. Like a this. Now my string is open and closed by the double quotes and the dog comma s is appropriate. So it's gonna go like this. Yeah, we did that. And now it looks more normal. Uh, but again, they can't match. Otherwise it doesn't know what when you're starting and closing the string. So back to this for x in this tuple, I have a, e, i, o, u. So if x in, do, 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 print. This is just a formatting piece. I have a dictionary is a vowel dot format x. So x equals an input. If x is in, a, e, i, or u. So if I typed in b, right? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even do it again yet. Let me do it. Whatever. I typed in b. It tells me it's kind of what it's doing. It's taking b. It's saying if b is in this tuple, b is not, then it's going to skip it. Else, x equals y. So, and then if it was Y, then it would have printed A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y, but it wasn't Y, I put in B, else print, this formatting is a consonant dot format X, and the X was the B, and the dot format is saying whatever I put here, put it over here, and I could do this two, three, four, five times, and just like we did in the Panda videos, the formatting then would be X, Y, Z, or whatever I put in, but those variables are tied one-to-one -one with the order of those open and close curly brackets regarding the dot format function. So if I did put in a, um, oh, what did that just do there? That was not right. So if I put in, let me put in a Y, and it should give me that printout, A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y, and that's appropriate. And if I put in a vowel, if I put a vowel, it gets A as a vowel. So that code is working properly. Sweet. Next, I have give me a month and I'll share the number of days. So the output here, it says the input rather, give me a month. So the months equal. And I just put, and notice their capital letter in the first, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. They are just a list. So that's open and close brackets with the strings appropriately. So print list of months with the space comma months. So give me a month and comma months. So I'm going to say May and I'll hit enter. And it tells me number of days is 31 days. So how is that doing it? What is it doing? Excuse me. So, don't even need that. Could have just done eight. Yeah, whatever. Did that. Did that. Um, give me a month. Number of days, 31. Um, month equals input. Give me a month. I just did that one. If month is equal to February, print number of days, 28, 29. Else if month is April, June, September, November, print number of days, 30. Else if month... Pretty self-explanatory, nothing crazy about here. Else print type a month better. So how would you get type a month better? That would be if you, um, sorry, I really could have broken this up better, guys. Uh, print a month better. Let's say I did May, but it was lowercase m. It's going to tell me type the month better because in my list, all of them are capital first letter. Um, so that's going to be it for today on 100 days to Python mastery. Um, go through the 100 days, go through the Python projects. Those are massive because not only are you learning all different Python, uh, Python context and syntax, but you are learning different libraries, uh, utilizing different modules from those libraries, um, finagling. It's just fun. It's more fun. And when you are actually able to execute code and see something immediately and have it be user friendly, uh, it keeps you motivated to keep pushing along and doing exercises like this that you may sit there and say, well, I don't care about the number. I don't care about dog years. I get it, but it's just, this is a matter of logistical thinking. All coding is, is creative problem solving in a logical flow format. That's all, all of it is. Um, 
So do the projects. It's a hell of a lot of fun. And then even when you get through those and you do the Minecraft projects, that's more fun. Doing the games is more fun. I'm not, I don't teach that for the sake of you learning how to do the games. I mean, that's cool. But I do it for the sake of it keeps you motivated. It keeps you entertained. It keeps you engaged. And then you're doing more and more of this. And you learn a lot about the modules and so forth. And we need to know about those games when we get into artificial intelligence and the deep learning as well. Because uh, we're going to use those games to train uh, different networks and bots. Uh, so with that said, take it easy, guys. Have a great day, and I will see you next time.